In 2008, a little game came out. Uh, I apologize. I glare from the window there. I actually unscrewed one of the light bulbs because it was it was plugged in right there, and it was making a very bad glare on the screen. But there's still one from the window. Anyway, 2008, a little game was made by the name of Call of Duty World at War. Now, this was the last Call of Duty game to be set in World War II. And as you could probably guess by the title of this video, I'm going to tell you why Call of Duty World at War was the best Call of Duty ever made. First, I'm going to throw a dip in real quick. Just a small one. I've been throwing small dips in just because well, it conserves dip, mainly. So yeah, just a small little pinch. And you can probably guess what dip it is. It's my everyday really fine cut natural. Anyway, that's enough of dip. Now, in 2008, I was six years old, and that is entirely way too young to be playing Call of Duty. That being said, I've still played it. I played it at a friend's house. Can't remember the name of the friend. Because uh, at the time, I didn't have a PlayStation 3 or 360. But yeah. And I will tell you that... Um, the, the music... I mean, yeah, this, this, I'm going to say this is a little nostalgia-based. But when I start talking about it, I'm going to... I do have reasons why it is the best. Um, the music, when, that menu screen music is just, it shakes you. And the thing about World of War is it's, it's an arcade shooter, yes. All Call of Duty games are arcade shooters. There's no getting past that. But it, it still takes itself seriously. It's not... Some rainbow futuristic flying around in the air, shooting at each other, throwing dildos at each other, or whatever is going on in Black Ops 4. It, it's a World War II shooter, and to my opinion, it really... The, the fur, as good as an arcade shooter can do, it's not supposed to be a simulator or realistic, really. It's an arcade shooter. You feel World War Two. You don't feel it, obviously, but you you see what's going on, and it's gritty and it has emotions. Unlike Call of Duty World War Two, Call of Duty World War Two is some. Um, did I say Call? Did I say World at War was their last venture in World War Two? Yeah, I complete, cl completely forgot Call of Duty World War Two was a thing until just now. <laughs> That shows how memorable of a game that one was. And I actually played like 200 hours of it. And I still can't remember it was ever a thing. Now, Call of Duty World War II, it's like this Hollywood movie representation. Like, it's basically Saving Private Ryan the video game. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. I mean, it starts off on uh, landing on a beach. I can't. I can't even remember if it's D-Day. And if it's D-Day, it starts off on D-Day. And yeah, not that there's anything wrong with a game starting on D-Day. Plenty of good games have done it. I think there was one of the Medal of Honor games did it. I think. I don't. Don't quote me on that. But there's nothing wrong with D-Day. Even uh, Call of Duty 1, I think. It didn't start on D-Day, but I think it was like a mission where you were paratrooping like behind enemy lines. But still. It... What was World at War, you... You... It's gritty. It's not... It doesn't feel like a movie... Well, it feels like a movie, but it doesn't feel like... 
it feels like a Tarantino movie if it's any sort of movie. Like, it's gory. And believe it or not, war is gory. <laughs> You know, and the campaign is amazing, but my favorite part of Call of Duty games that has been squandered a lot in the recent years, because I'm an old school, I'm always, I always adhere to that old school, is zombies. And you could probably guess that I'm an old school zombies player, or an old school fan, because World at War is my favorite, and a lot of people oh say Black Ops 3 is the best Call of Duty zombie game because it's got all the maps because uh, what's it called, DLC? I can't even remember what it's called, what is it? I have no clue. But it's like, but the thing is, if that's what makes it so good, those maps aren't original to Black Ops 3. They were made in better games. I mean, Black Ops 3 is fun. I've played a good bit of Black Ops 3, and especially the custom zombies. It's a good amount of fun. I'm not knocking Black Ops 3 by any means. I mean, I'm knocking the multiplayer and the campaign all day long. But zombies is pretty solid. And zombies is where I... My forte into Call of Duty. I mean, it used to be zombies in campaign, but the campaigns got kind of... Trashy. Especially with Black Ops 3. Um, Infinite Warfare Zombies, I refused to ever buy Infinite Warfare, didn't buy it when it came out, still to this day have never bought Infinite Warfare, I've played the zombies at a friend's house a while ago, I think, maybe, and it didn't really impress me, I, listen, in World War II Zombies, way too overcomplicated, and with Black Ops 3 Zombies, way too overcomplicated, a lot of people like, oh, you have to do this and do this and do this. I say the most complicated I want my, like, j like normal playing to be is Mob of the Dead. Anything more than Mob of the Dead, no shot. You know, having to build a plane to go to pack a punch, that's a fun and interesting idea. But having, like, all this other weird stuff, no. In Black Ops 3, they took the zombie storyline, which was already a confusing mess, and just made it way more confusing. I I used to be up to date with the Call of Duty zombie story. No clue what's going on with it anymore. At least the Treyarch one. I don't know about the other ones. The other ones can go to hell for all I care. Because Treyarch, they're the only zombies ones I care about. And, um, yeah. World at War did it right. You put on a map, it was dark, and it was like, especially Nocturne and Houghton. That map is creepy. To this day, I'll play it, and it's like, this is creepy. <laughs> like, now, like, zombies has taken a way too arcade turn, and it doesn't feel creepy. I mean, maybe to some people it's not, but, uh, even, World at War is it, but, I, listen, I play World at War, and to this day, if I want, if I boot up Knocked, I'm like, this is creepy, because it's just dark, it's atmospheric, it's just, there's just something missing from the newer ones. And, uh, yeah, the multiplayer is unfortunately dead, due to hackers, and, basically just that which is unfortunate and if there's ever a remaster of uh world at war and it gets released alongside the whatever news call of duty game it is i'll buy it i don't care how trashy the newest one is what is it black ops 5 it'll be or whatever Treyarch comes out with i don't care how trashy it is I will pay, I'll pay a hundred dollars just to get World at War remastered, because I love World at War. And honestly, they'll probably make it brighter, and they'll probably ruin it, <laughs> because 
to get, in my opinion, to get the real world at war experience, you know, get on your PS3, get on your 360, get on your PC, and throw in that disc, or if you're on PC, blew it up on Steam, and just play it, and it's, you know, if you've never played World at War, and you ha still have a PS3, or a 360, or you have a PC, get it. You can pro you can order it offline for pretty cheap, I'd imagine, if you're on one of the normal systems, and on PC it's probably like $10, $20. On Steam, but you could get it cheaper elsewhere than Steam. Get it, and, you know, I, a lot of times I listen to music when I play a game, but don't do that. Get into the game, turn the lights out in the room, and play the game, and just listen to it. Listen to the menu music, and... It's it's genuinely moving. It really is. And I'm going to end this now because I'm rambling. But I'm going to end on this final note. They just don't build them like they used to.